Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 17. Oh, we on set. We on 1717. Yep. I need y'all to subscribe, like, uh, comment, share the video. Listen here. I think we do a good job on this show. Even though this season may seem a little trashy, mm -hmm. I feel like we come in here and we try to take at least as much trash as possible. We are the garbage men of this show, okay? <laughs> we try to take as much trash out of it, try to make your house, your property value a little higher than it was before. You get what I'm saying? I get you. You ready, Blair? I'm ready. Walk me through this. Emily is in the hospital. Yeah. She didn't have a concussion, but she had a really ga uh, gnarly gash in her head. Yeah. And she got stitches. Brennan relayed the information to Lauren, Claire, and Austin. Mm -hmm. Claire tells Emily that she's sorry. She wants to give her a hug. Mm -hmm. Emily says that she wants to cry, but she's happy that she's okay. Brennan tells her that it's going to be okay, and he has her back. So far, so good. What did you think about this scene, Blair? I was happy to see Brennan being supportive. Yeah. And it didn't seem like he was annoyed. It mm -hmm. didn't seem like he was ready to go. Like he was genuinely there. He was holding her hand. So I appreciated the support he gave her. Not Blair giving Brennan compliments. Uh oh. Is this a hill turn? Is Brennan... ain't no hill turn. Hey, okay. I could recognize some people do right. That's all. Okay, let's move on then. <laughs> Chloe and Michael are packing for the retreat, yeah. and Michael is wearing the skirt. Mm -hmm. Chloe is trying to get used to it, but she doesn't want to dwell on it. Yeah. She keeps cracking jokes about his skirt, mm -hmm. and she hopes over time she can get over his fashion choices. Mm -hmm. Michael is hoping to learn something from the other couples, and Chloe is looking forward to hanging with the girls. Yeah. Um, is Michael doing this on purpose, Blair? I feel like he didn't have to choose a skirt to wear. What, to push the envelope? Yeah, like, I, I, like it doesn't feel genuine to me. I just feel like he's one of those people who just likes to push the envelope. And I don't know, I don't think it's specifically to Chloe, but I think that he likes to give, I'm not going to say give people a rise because I think he's being himself, mm -hmm. but I think he likes that he's out of the box and he wants to be different. Mm, as a, Besides yeah. being different, he's trying hard to be different and things like that. Do you think he is different? I think he is different, see, but I think he tries at the same time. Okay, cause I, I was about yeah. to say, because I'm like, listen here. Even she was making little passive aggressive jokes, which I thought was funny. Mm -hmm. She said, look, I'm wearing jeans and, and he's wearing a skirt. Yeah. Like, I feel like, hey, if you wear a skirt and things of that nature, if I didn't meet you in a skirt, I feel like he's trying his best to be like, look at me. I'm different. I'm going to wear a skirt. She made a joke saying, look, he already got my pearls. He got my earrings and things of that nature throughout the show. I just feel like he's trying hard to prove how different he is besides it naturally flowing. Second question. How do you feel about Chloe so far um, with everything you see in this episode? With this episode, I still don't really see it for Chloe like that. Um, I didn't think she was bad per se this episode mm -hmm. but i just felt like okay see you have a problem with it why did you tell pastor cal that you know you're just going to get through it and if the man is more feminine then that just might be what you need like you wrapped everything in a nice bow when you talk to the counselor but you over here cracking jokes and have something to say every other second because so, he's wearing a skirt he but wasn't, I'm, he wanted, he wanted and I'm not saying she can't say that but she i feel like she could say that that is different and it's kind of she, an issue she did in a you way feel like she did she, she was like look this is not Normally, Maybe she wasn't straightforward this ain't, enough for me. This ain't what what do like you want her to say? I don't want a man. She's not attracted to it. Yes, I feel like that's something that she should tell her spouse first before. Yeah, because she, she told the girls before, later on before she tells Pastor Kyle. Also, yes, she told the girls, but here's here's my overall thought. Mm -hmm. I don't see what y'all see in Chloe. Unfortunately, when I was watching this episode, I was like, I like Chloe. I was like, Chloe got a nice personality. You get what I'm saying? Things that she may not like or things that may fail her marriage, I feel like it's not her fault. You get what I'm saying? I thought this perfectionist type of minimalistic mindset and things was going to doom her marriage. But I'm like, actually, Chloe's actually pretty cool. She got a nice personality and things like that. She's nice. Um, I feel like Michael is doing everything in his power to basically sabotage his chance in having someone like love him completely and fully. Is, 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 is very strange. I get what you're saying, but I think that's really how Michael is. And he and I think he likes when we saw him on being different. When we saw him on the after parties and things of that nature, he wasn't wearing a skirt. Mm -hmm. He he like like he wasn't wearing a skirt. 
throughout the episodes before he was married, he wasn't wearing a skirt. You can own a skirt. Okay, cool. But come on, bro. Put on some pants. We we are in Denver. <laughs> okay. It's cold. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Continue. Well, Austin brings Becca back to... Um, well, Austin being, brings... Sorry. Take your time, baby. <laughs> Austin brings Becca breakfast in bed. Yeah. Becca has a stomach bug. And mm-hmm. Austin says it sucks because they wanted to put more into their physical connection last Listen, night. Listen, man. Oh, man. He was really going to do it, man. I, man. Last night was the night. Now, now will it ever happen? I don't know. It was last night. That mm-hmm. was the night. He needs your encouragement. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with Austin. Um, I think y'all have an idea what's wrong with Austin. I really don't know. The fact that he even said um, that I wish, like, you know, that we could have worked on our physical intimacy, that's gaslighting. Mm. That's very gaslighting because you wait till there's no chance for y'all to work on y'all physical intimacy to talk about, man, you know, because you got this stomach bug, I really wish that we could have, you know, touched each other tonight. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. I promise you, as sick as Becca was, if you would have been like, I'm ready, she would have found a way. She <laughs> would have found a way to perform mm. and things of that nature. Austin, I'm over you. Yeah. Because I think you're, I, actually, I think you're the biggest liar on the show. Mm-hmm. I think you're a bigger liar than Orion. Mm. And, and and Blair's not a big fan of Orion. No. You get what I'm saying? So I, I, I'm really off of Austin. Yeah. Go ahead. Emily thanks Brennan for staying at the hospital with her. Yeah. He says that she handled things like a warrior, yeah. but she says that she is warriored out. Emily says that uh, this experience had put things into perspective. And when you're not well, you're relying on your partner. Mm-hmm. And they both feel like this has brought them closer together. Was this the scene where she said that she wouldn't want nobody else to be there but him? Basically, like, like she couldn't hope for a better person or wish for a better person for 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 her to be there besides him because if not i'm gonna say this either way because we know she said it in the show yeah hey listen don't trauma bond okay based on what you told us or based what was related to us on the show you hit a tree a branch got caught up under the helmet gash your head a little bit you're gonna get stitches you're good it's basically a major scratch Mm -hmm. that's basically what it is don't trauma bond over this don't use this as an example or reason to basically be like, this is why we need to be together. Brennan, you've been a good person. Listen here, Brennan is just not an evil person. Mm-hmm. That's all. That doesn't mean he's that doesn't mean he's a good person. He's just not an evil person. Evil person would have left you in the snow, kept riding. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. An evil person wouldn't be with you in the hospital. He's just not an evil person. He still could be a bad person, or at least a bad partner mm-hmm. at that. Um, don't trauma bond. Don't use this experience as a reset. You get what I'm saying? Many times in life, we trauma bond with people that we know we shouldn't be with. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And and I feel like Emily has fallen for that trap. I feel like Brendan already made his decision, and that decision has been made, gash or not. You get what I'm saying? He do not want to be with you, especially with the big gash on, on your head and things of that nature. So that's just my opinion on it. Okay. Well, moving on, Chloe and Michael arrive to the house. Yeah. They have a personal chef coming to cook dinner. So everybody meets up with Chloe nice. and Michael and just kind of say, hey, give their pleasantries. Mm-hmm. And Chloe tells everyone, look, this isn't something that you can prepare for. No. Being married at first sight. And Michael says that they've been aligned in a lot of their values. Chloe anticipates things will be more challenging, but mm-hmm. she intends to be the best communicator she can be. Yeah. Michael asks how everyone's journey has been going. And Orion says that his marriage lasted 10 days. They dealt with intense things and there has been tension. Mm. Orion looks forward to finding um, the peace between them and their common ground. Mm -hmm. And if that's something Lauren's up for, he really wants to have a conversation with her. Mm. Lauren thinks Orion has a great demeanor when he's addressing the group, but Mm -hmm. he never communicates with her individually at all. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem authentic to her and it is frustrating. He asks, would you like to respond when I talk? And she says, I'm just going to drink my wine. Mm, What did you think of that, Blair? Yeah, Orion does do that weird stuff to where he addresses the group. When he's talking about Lauren, and even in the same in- instance, he's like, there's kind of some tension there. There's some tension there. And it's just like, you're my ex-husband. Mm. What do you want me to do? What do you, mm-hmm. How do you want me to act towards you? So I am thankful that Lauren just kind of paid him dust because I'm, what do you want me to say? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> like I, I'm really over Orion and his uh, proclamations to the group. I'm just done with it. 
what do you think Orion's goal was um, on this trip? I really think Orion wants to make sure that he looks as good as possible. Mm. And I even say that because when it came to the downfall and the issues of the relationship, Mm -hmm. he, even then, when people were asked, how are y'all, how are things going, whatever, whatever. And he tried to be as vague as possible to try to keep himself looking good. Yeah. And even when he was in the wrong, he couldn't stay in the wrong for long until he got mad at her again. Mm Mm-hmm. And he started blaming her. So I don't think Orion can sit in the fact that he has made some decision that's, well, he has made the major decision that ended the relationship and saying that he was going to leave and leave and have a divorce. Mm -hmm. So he really wants to, like he says, create this positive narrative around their divorce when it's just like, what happened, happened. Mm. What, what, what do you want to explain away? You know, I think I'm, I'm going to take a swing and this is going to be a big swing from my field. Orion's goal started at the wedding. Connected with Lauren at the wedding was plan number one to get to the overall plan. I think Orion's goal for this trip was to reconnect with Lauren in some way, some fashion. That doesn't mean to be married, but to reconnect and to potentially have relations with her on this trip. Sex. He thought that was gonna happen. Oh, okay. I, I I think in some way because I'm trying to think from my perspective when you're in these type of situations, when you're with an ex or you're going on a trip because they all knew like they was going on some retreat. Mm-hmm. Everybody that remember he doesn't know how everybody's moving because right. he's not on the show. So in some fashion, everybody's coupled up, right? Maybe in some fashion, my ex is going to be there, right? We kind of don't like each other, but, you know, one night stand, one weekend stand, whatever it is. If I can at least mend the bridges between us two, and this is my ex, maybe, well, we have relations, I could also change the uh, 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 narrative around what I, what everybody else saw this season. Okay. So I think he was trying to, quote unquote, hey, Lauren, let's like try to talk to her, things of that nature at the wedding just to get her temperature. But even Lauren said, like, hey, he talked to me a little bit, but even then he was staying offish. Get a temperature. Then at the retreat, they play nice. They be nice and things like that. Maybe one night they just, you know. You know. You know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> While doing that, it's kind of hard to, um, because he have fun while changing the narrative at the same time. It's kind of hard to view Orion as this villain, villain, villain if Lauren have a moment of weakness and sleep with him for one night. Oh. That is just something that I've seen, maybe something that I participated in, things of that nature where you go somewhere and you're you you know this woman, she knows you, y'all are on a retreat, kind of just like, hey, whatever we do here stays here, things of that nature. But Orion's weird, though, mm-hmm. because he's talking to Lauren through us, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, so when we ask him what... What do you have planned for the day, Orion? He would say, well, you know this tension between me and Lauren. And I, if I'm Lauren, I'm looking at him every time. I'm like, <laughs> why are you mentioning me every time we ask him specifically about you? Yeah. That's just my left field analogy because I'm like, there's really no reason for him to even attempt mm-hmm. to. I don't want to believe he's that stupid to basically attempt to want to be friends with someone that he single handedly pulled off the show. Yeah. Like he's the reason why they are not on the show. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Go ahead. Emily and Brennan leave the hospital. Yeah. Back at the house, um, everyone is playing games. Yeah. They play a game where they read a statement and guess who the statement belonged to. Okay. The, really, the only things that stood out to me was when they read that Austin kissed a donkey in the mouth um, in his youth. Mm-hmm. So that to me, I was just like, so Austin just be doing anything. He, w- he, he don't mind kissing anybody or anything. He don't want to put his thing in a place, though. We don't know what Austin, that's the thing about it. He probably <laughs> do put his thing in places. Okay. It's just not Becca. Oh, you get what I'm saying? Maybe. And 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 my thing is like, Austin, you over here, like, I think you choose to write what statement you want to write. Why, yeah, why would you why share that? Why did you share that? Yeah. Weirdo. Like, like that, that's, 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 you could have shared anything about yourself. Mm-hmm. Anything and things of that nature. You were like, hey, guess what? I, I kissed a donkey. Mm-hmm. Why? Why would you want us to know that about you? Yeah. Come on, man. Continue. 
Lauren and Orion finally had their sit down. Yeah. And Orion feels that what happened to Emily made him think about his relationships. I don't know how Lauren popped up in that because she is not one of your relationships. But anyway, he wants to create a positive narrative with Lauren. Mm -hmm. He tells her that he would like to build a bridge and he is missing their connection. Stop right there. What does he mean build a bridge and missing a connection? That's why I'm like, what is he talking about? Because the only he says a lot of nothing. The only connection that he that he could think of is married at first sight. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's why I'm like this bridge that he's trying to connect. What is he hoping that like tonight that like they that like she actually be like, you know what? I do miss you, too. And then like one night y'all just have a moment. And then that's when you could be like, see, we good, y'all. But go ahead. Continue. Yeah. I, I feel like you finish his 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 nothing statement. You yes. Know? Well, he tells her that he wants them to be able to team up in conversation about what they went through mm-hmm. and how they got through it. Mm. Lauren says that it is not fair. To want me to be partners with you in our divorce mm. when I didn't get that in our marriage. Mm-hmm. He could have pulled her to the side to tell her he wanted a conversation and he only puts her on on the spot in front of other couples. So to her, it doesn't feel real. Mm. He apologizes for not making it feel like they were on a team in marriage. Mm-hmm. And he says that he's afraid to say something wrong to her and have things go south. Oh, angry black woman alert. Right. Mm -hmm. Orion asks if he talks to her, you know, is it that what you need for me to just keep up communication? Mm -hmm. Lauren doesn't know what needs to happen. She's confused. Um, He says that, but I want you to know it's on me. And Lauren has to do what's best for her. She also says that she's caught between her heart and her head. Mm. Her head's telling her to pretty much like there's no reason for them to be friends. There's nothing she can gain from Mm -hmm. this relationship, but her heart still has some type of connection. And she feels like she actually went through a breakup with this man. That's wild, right? That is wild. (laughs) That is really wild. You to get a chance to unpack. And the more you got to know him, the worse he became. So like, I don't get it. Matter of fact, even when y'all took a break and haven't seen each other and y'all resume basically where y'all left off, he's even worse (laughs) today (laughs) than he was. I, I don't know what he means by he said he want us to team up. Like, 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 what do you mean? Like, do you want to be the it couple? He wants them to be like a united front in divorce. Like, but the we, man is delusional. But we know y'all divorced, though. Yeah. This is the singles retreat, mm-hmm. right? Michael and Chloe showed up. So that makes it, that kind of even it out a little bit, kind of. But nobody there is basically happily, happily married. Right. Even Chloe, she's kind of like, hey, she keeps saying things like, his heart is good. You right. get what I'm saying? Things things to basically try to talk her off the ledge. Nothing physical. You know? Mm-hmm. Her, his heart is good. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, Orion, I really don't know what your goal is. Um, even though you stated it in a scene, I still don't know what your goal is. Because you're over here saying we need to be a united front. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, 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 we're not a united front. And Lauren said something that was very impactful. She said, I find it very strange, paraphrasing, that you want to be united in divorce more than when we was married. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he cares about how things look. Like, I, I'm just like, it is what it is. We're not together. We're not friends. Yeah. And that is fine. Like, why are you trying to control her reaction, her response, she or how had, she interacts with she you? She hasn't even had no reactions to him. No. It, and it, and it, he's it, over here talking about tension, and I don't know what to say. He she, she's not thinking about you oh, at all. Lauren is not bad-mouthing anybody. Lauren is not bad-mouthing um, the experience. Lauren, only thing Lauren said, and this was to Claire, kind of, was, I came in for you. That's mm-hmm. the most thing she said. Yeah. Right. But she did not bad mouth that man. She is not over here avoiding that man. As far as we know, on on camera, you get what I'm saying? She's not even acting angry towards him. So I don't even understand. She's just sitting there while he makes proclamations all the time. Exactly. Like (laughs) she's like, I didn't know that I had a goal this this week. You know, (laughs) go ahead. Yes. Well, Emily arrives and they sit down and they talk. And oh, my goodness, Emily, that was horrible. They shaved her head. She has a humongous gash and she has a black eye. Oh, did they shave it for real? Yeah. Oh, in that area. I, I mm-hmm. thought I thought they just pulled it back. No, that oh. area was shaved. Oh, OK, Um, she explains. Oh, stitches. Yeah. Yeah. She explains how everything happened. And Brendan says that she's really been handling this well, um, but he knows he needs to step up and take care of her. Yeah. They undersold that gash. Yeah. They they undersold it. Even the cast was like, hey, they told us this, but it was 
It was a little, it was a big gash. It was huge. And guess what? They did a good job because you, a gash like that actually knows someone that uh, was playing basketball, and they um they ran into each other. Mm-hmm. Their their faces ran into each other. He had like a big gash like right here across his face oh, and things gosh. like that to where you saw like the white meat. Mm-hmm. Um, you do have to go to a plastic surgeon and things like that. Um, so she went. He went to an outpatient uh, plastic surgeon, and he looks like it never even happened. That's amazing. It like it's not even like a little. It's not it maybe like a little scar. Mm-hmm. It looked like it didn't even happen. When when we see Emily, it looked like it never even happened. Like that big gash that basically go from the top of her head all the way down to her chin and stuff. It looked like it didn't. It don't even happen. Yeah, so she grew she, her hair back in the after parties and yeah, stuff. So, so yeah. Well, when she leaves, everyone is just like shocked. Like they're just like, oh my gosh, I didn't mm-hmm. know it was that bad. Yeah. Becca is still stuck in bed, and Austin slept in another bed. Yeah, I mean, he did that on the first night when she was feeling well anyway, so... Yeah. You know what? I I don't want to talk about children on this show, so I'm not going to bring up Austin okay. as much as possible. Because Austin's a child. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He's <laughs> okay. a child. All right. He's not a man. He, he bring up things to happen in his youth. He have no grown-up accomplishments or anything. You know, the mm-hmm. thing... The most interesting fact about him is that he kissed a donkey in the mouth. Cool, brother. Right. Chloe gets a spa little activity together for the ladies, like mm-hmm. face masks, foot masks, things like that, for Emily, Lauren, and Claire. Chloe shares that it has been a whirlwind and talks about Michael's fashion. Mm-hmm. I forgot his name for a minute. Chloe says that his fashion has made it hard to build that intimacy and attraction. Mm, physical. Yeah. Emily says that after going through something like what she went through, um, she wouldn't have wanted anyone else there. Um, but it brings you together. It don't. It's a trauma bond. And if it does, it'll be literally for like a day or two. Once you're feeling better, he'll be over you again. It's a trauma bond. <laughs> exactly. Once you heal up, he'll be like, oh, it's like it never happened. Mm-hmm. You're getting on my nerves. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Don't use this as a reset, Emily. That will be, and that's the thing about it. You, you really can't blame Emily because Emily's the one that never been in a serious relationship. In serious relationships, trust me, there's a lot of things that happen to one person that kind of don't have nothing to do with the other person. Mm -hmm. Brennan's going to look at this as, oh, because I was with you, you get what I'm saying? I feel responsible for taking care of you. I'm nursing you to health. But once you're healthy, that has nothing to do with me. Right. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's so like, don't trauma bond with this person. Chloe is really having a hard time. And I think we're going to go for a record on this show that no one had sex throughout this whole season. Mm. I don't think a lot of y'all noticed that until I pointed that out a couple episodes ago. I kind of feel like Chloe and Michael got it in. Do you feel that for way? For Honeymoon. Maybe. Because she was excited. Maybe. Yeah. But my thing is, that's when she thought he only wore pants. That is true. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so will it happen with her actually knowing him? So it's, <laughs> and, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm like, if I give you an example. Right now, my generation... And maybe not even my generation. The generation below me. I am a. I am a. a help me out. I am a millennial. Yes. And the generation is Gen Z. Right. Right. They are into painting their nails. Mm-hmm. Right. And things of that nature, like black or or well, back in the day, rock stars used to wear black paint and things like that. But yeah, now, or but Dennis now, Rodman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, but even him, like maybe not Dennis Rodman, because Dennis Rodman's not a, a rock star. But Dennis Rodman actually do. The neck, the paint of the nail is how people do it today. Right. Rock stars back in the day did black and things like that. You may see Dennis with red, different colors, tips, French mm-hmm. tips, and things of that nature. Right. I feel like because it's a trend, because it's a trend mm-hmm. when men call it art on their nails. They say, "How come men can't paint their nails and things of that?" Day? I'm not from that generation. Mm-hmm. I feel like Michael's doing the exact same thing. I feel like he's trying hard to be different, even though you feel like it's genuine, right? But I don't feel like it's genuine. But I feel like he, and I could totally be reading into this wrong, but I feel like he is that way, but I think he is trying in the same breath because it makes him feel good to stand out. Like maybe that's something that like helps with his like uh, self-esteem that people notice him. Let me give you or, You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. With his fashions and things of that nature, he already stands out if he don't wear the skirt. Yeah. Dude, you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He already stands. So where where does asking for my pearl necklace falls in that? Where does asking for my earrings fall in that? That's called trying yeah. too hard. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he's basically like, yeah, I'm going to be, even though I'm different, I'm going to try and try and try to be No, different. I agree with you. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, bro, just be yourself. Like, so that's why I'm like, I think she's finding it very hard because I think in some way outside of, you know, she wants a manly man. 
I think she kind of feels like, oh, he's trying to basically like like he's trying to throw it in my face. Skirts, asking for my jewelry, asking for my clothes. I just feel like he's just trying too hard. Right. And I and guess what? I agree, Chloe. Yeah. Well, Lauren has a yoga instructor come lead a class for everyone. Yeah. Becca's feeling better, so she comes out to watch. Mm -hmm. And Emily is sitting on the sideline watching as well. Yeah. She's trying to do some of the moves while she's sitting, and she doesn't move where she's about to lean over, and Brennan tells her to relax. What is up with y'all women? (laughs) He said this is, like, the main thing you should not be doing is bending over. I don't understand y'all women. And as you can see, my wife is over here uh, with, with a sling, right? What's up with y'all women that, like, after y'all leave the hospital or after y'all leave the doctor and things like that, she damn near got concussed, right? Yeah. She, her job is just to sit down somewhere, but she want to do yoga to where we, we see you crack your muffin just a couple days ago. Uh-huh. Why are y'all co- consistently putting yourselves in danger? Even Emily said, yeah, you know, see, that's why we got to be together. I told you I am the type that you got to keep your eyes on. That is not <laughs> fun. <laughs> It's like chasing after a grown baby. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But I, I thought, I think, Brendan, we in the same boat, bro. Not necessarily, <laughs> but okay. Boat. I, he, had, he had to say, hey, 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 don't lean over to where you can crack your head on the cement. Hey, Blair, don't do that, okay? Because we want you to that arm again, okay? Anyway. Brendan, I'm with you. <laughs> Back to the show. Uh-huh. The, um, the yoga instructor asks everyone how they show compassion. Yeah. Lauren talks about showing compassion to herself. I think Brendan talked about how he showed compassion to Emily. Of course. And Orion immediately opens up with Lauren and I. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> he says he likes to be uh, compassionate or he wants to be more compassionate and have open lines of communication Mm -hmm. and really wanted to come at her in a genuine way well this ain't the way brother (sighs) this ain't the way all these public speeches about lauren Mm -hmm. if i was lauren i I would just have to get up and walk away because i'm like he's not talking to me (laughs) he's not talking to me but your name is lauren so he is talking talking about me but i could literally go up and get some coffee Mm because if he wanted to talk to me then he can come talk to me Mm. oh my goodness anyway austin and becca chat Austin would like to focus on enjoying the rest of the day together and see if they can get back into the intimacy headspace. Mm. Becca tells him that she needs some flirting and really some more effort from him. So basically, uh, Austin, I need you to act like a man that has sex before. You don't come back and just say, hey, that intimacy thing that we supposed to work on tonight. Let's work on getting in that headspace. No, 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 no. What do you mean? You get her in that headspace. So that's why I'm like, it goes from um, Austin not wanting to, because people can say, Becca, uh, he's not attracted to you. I will say a woman begging me for sex when I don't want to have sex with her is unattractive. You got to shoot her away with a stick. You get what I'm saying? Like, go get, get. You know (laughs) what I mean? But Austin, you haven't told her that you're not attracted to her. You love kissing, you get what I'm saying? But obviously, you love kissing things, so kissing a woman is nothing if you could kiss a donkey, you know, to your preference. Hello. You know what I mean? So, my thing is, hey, it it feels like you're inept now. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? You don't even know the fundamentals of flirting. You don't know the fundamentals of, of, of basically getting her to the place that you are at already, if you're there. You get what I'm saying? So, if you don't even know these fundamentals... Why did you sign up for this show? I'm like, if you're a virgin, just say that. No, 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 no. It's worse than virgin. If you're scared of women as a heterosexual man, because that's what he is declaring himself to be by being on this show. Why are you on this show? Because there are requirements. There are needs to be met as a husband. This is not a dating show. You get what I'm saying? This is a marriage show. Mm -hmm. This is not a friendship show, as Pastor Cal told us. It's a marriage show. So did he thought that he could have a wife and never sleep with her? Like, like, like that's that's what it's coming down to. And now he's like, you know, we we figure working that PI thing. What is PI, uh, Austin? That physical, that physical intimacy. No, it's called sex. That's what it's (laughs) called. You get what I'm saying? Sex. And that's why she's like, well, you know, like flirting, effort lick me kicks me something you get what i'm saying i i really don't know what's wrong with austin maybe he just inept in all in all of those factors and if that's the case he shouldn't have signed up for this show Mm. he shouldn't have signed up for the show this show is for adults 
Right. Not for not for teenagers. You get what I'm saying? Who wear their hats backwards and things of that nature. <laughs> well, Orion talks to Lauren again. Wow. One on one. He thanks Lauren for bringing the yoga instructor. I'm like, why are y'all making her sit down and talk to this man every time? This I is mean, really annoying. I ain't gonna hold you. And Lauren, if you wanna be there, you're gonna talk to Orion. Yeah. I'm with producers on this one because she said that she wasn't gonna come. I mean, she should have listened to her head and heart. Yeah, she shouldn't have came. She shouldn't have came. She should have been like him. But but since you wanna come, guess what? Orion's downstairs waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lauren is open to being open to communication. Yeah. She doesn't know how to navigate divorce and how much she can receive of him in the divorce. Mm. He says he doesn't know either. Lauren thinks they're doing a good job of being civil and friendly. Yeah. And Lauren also doesn't see the value in having a friendship with him. She was holding out for love with him probably a few weeks ago, Mm -hmm. wanting him to call, wanting him to text. Mm -hmm. And it really felt like a true breakup to her. He asked her if she would want to do a check in in a week. And Lauren says, let me drive that. If I want to reach out to you, if I want to talk to you, I'll do that. That means she ain't going to reach out to you at all, buddy. Finally. Your time to hit the iron was a couple weeks ago when she was still feeling like she wanted to be part of this experience. Mm -hmm. Now, that iron is cold. Yeah. Ice cold. Have you ever had an ex? Have you ever had a person who you was in love with and things of that nature? They can do no wrong. They look perfect and things like that. And once the breakup happens and you're actually over the breakup, I'm not talking about the relationship within the breakup because you know how that works. Yeah, the back and forth. Exactly. Uh I'm talking about the actual breakup to where you're completely over it. They don't even look the same. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) she she, she looks at orion and she's like i don't even see the value of of, of a friendship here with us and he's like hey how about i like check in you know you know Mm -hmm. she's like i'll call you yeah okay like and and that's what i'm saying like the iron is cold and once it goes cold for women based on my experiences it's done Mm -hmm. (laughs) you get what i'm saying it's completely done she don't want to talk to you she she, matter of fact she don't even count you as an ex no and she shouldn't Mm -hmm. with married at first sight yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone goes to this Ninja Warrior obstacle course. Yeah. Michael is crushing all the obstacles and Chloe is turned on by it. Finally. After the obstacles, they sit around and talk. Brennan says that he and Emily went through something traumatic together or brought them closer together. Trauma bonding. Austin shares that he needs to up his romance game. And there's always tonight. Mm. But there's always tomorrow, and tomorrow never comes when it comes with Austin. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Give Just like a- when you want to start your diet. I'm going to start on Monday. Mm-hmm. Monday of the 31st of February in 2045. Mm, you lost me for It'll a never second, come. But now I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know what That's you That's when Austin and Becca will have sex. Mm. February 31st. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Michael is in the bath. Chloe comes to sit and talk to him. She tells him that she wasn't expecting to be so good at the obstacle course. Mm -hmm. She asks him how he feels about the couple's retreat. And Michael says it's nice to hang out with everyone, but he is really surprised by people's challenges. I would be too if I show up and they're like, what up? (laughs) None of y'all together? (laughs) Okay. Y'all ain't intimate. Y'all just getting back cool because she had an accident? What Mm -hmm. in the world? Anyway, Mm -hmm. Chloe was surprised by how many journeys have ended or not or are not on a good path. Stop right there. Mm -hmm. If you're Chloe... And I'm Michael. Yeah. And you already had your anxiety attacks, your panic attacks and things of that nature throughout this process, right? Mm -hmm. You already know how volatile this process could be. And not volatile in the sense of physical harm, but just how it could be one end of the spectrum and then it could be totally the other end of the spectrum. Right. How would you feel when you come in and everybody is not together? I'd be scared. (laughs) My heart be racing. My palms be sweating. I'd be probably having a little panic attack like Chloe. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just like, you know what? I think I need a break. And then I'm going to drive home. <laughs> you ain't com- you ain't I'm not back coming film? back. I'm not coming back. back. No, back I don't know why I signed up for okay. this. Okay. I, um, I'm going to call my ex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See if we can make that work. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so um, she feels that lack of communication has been a downfall for a lot of the couples, mm-hmm. but it's been their primary focus. So she thinks that they should be able to work because they focus on their communication. Mm-hmm. And she is enjoying talking to Michael. She appreciates how he talks and shares and gets deep with her. And she likes seeing him with a shirt off in the bubble bath. So the physical intimacy or attraction is growing. When he acts like a quote unquote man. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. you know. Austin and Becca have a movie night, or Mm -hmm. at least Austin tries to throw one. Uh, When Becca talks about liking the couple's retreat and 
enjoying spending time with their friends. Mm -hmm. Friday was disappointing because he talked about intimacy and it just started on a bad note. Nothing Mm -hmm. ever happened. He apologizes that he wasn't in the mindset that night. Becca cries because she keeps waiting. He builds up or he built up the couple's retreat and make it seem like something might happen. But she continues to keep waiting. Mm -hmm. And she shares that it does not feel good to beg to be wanted. Mm. Austin wants to make it better. Becca hasn't gained a lot of clarity from him. Mm -hmm. And he admits he has had faults, but feels that they've made a lot of progression. Mm. Becca's like, all we've done is make out a lot. Mm. And he he traded that with a donkey. And then he tries to say intimacy isn't always physical. Mm. But that's exactly what y'all are trying to work on, the physical part. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Come on, (laughs) Blair. Come on, Blair. Becca's like, nothing ever happens after you say you desire me and you want to make things better. Stop right there. Let's take... Let's take physical intimacy out of that. Uh-huh. As a man, right? All you have is your word, right? Because it's it because it's intimacy, and we know she's talking about sex. Mm-hmm. We can underestimate or undervalue what she said right there. Right. But, but let's take sex out of it. Mm-hmm. If he said he's going to do something as a husband or as a man, and he don't follow through on that word, man. Mm-hmm. That's that's all he's been doing throughout these weeks and these things throughout this process of married at first sight. Mm -hmm. He's been promising things and not following through. Right. So let's take sex out of it and let's put a house. Mm -hmm. Let's put children because y'all already don't uh, agree with religion. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But let's let's put the things that are more trivial that that's like everyday type of things. Right. What? How? How can she like you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, like, thank God she's only talking about sex, but that's just going to overflow the other areas of his life that I don't think Austin the type of person to come through for you. Right. I really don't think so. Mm-hmm. Because I don't think he has the adult. I don't think he has the adult mindset. I don't think he has the maturity. I think out of everybody on this show. He is the worst castmate on Married at First Sight. Wow. And that is, and, and, and listen, Orion is like right there on his tail. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I think he's the worst because he gives the illusion that he's ready for marriage. He gives the illusion that he's willing to try. He gives the illusion that he gives his word, but he blew, blow, he blew balls you every time. Yeah. And I think that's actually worse than someone actually showing you their hand and being an a-hole or being mean, but someone who has to capacity to do what they say they will do but just don't do it Mm -hmm. how would you feel if you was a woman in that position not only in the sex uh category but just like you gave me a word and you're not following through yeah i would be gone probably soon okay um like becca like i'd probably try to work it out i'd probably try to have these talks and communication Yeah, yeah but if you can't like decide to do something and do it that you said you're gonna do exactly Mm -hmm. like you're saying you got to be in a mind space and you got to be in a mindset and all this type of stuff like i'm just like okay it seems like it's a lot it takes a lot for you to like make a decision and Mm -hmm. make action and that doesn't necessarily just have to be in the bedroom yeah like and if that's the issue you have in the bedroom does it you know, trickle out to other parts of your it life does. to where you can't decide and make an action and move and move forward in, in your decisions. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would really look at that as a weakness and probably leave because I mean, it, he can't help it. He really can't. And he also doesn't want to keep talking about it, but I'm just like, you don't want to keep talking about it, but you're not really doing anything different. And then he keeps saying the dumb thing. is like, I feel like we made progressions. I'm like, <laughs> okay, my guy. <laughs> yeah. I'd be over him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, um, Austin asks her that if she, if she thinks this conversation they're having is helpful mm. and Becca does think it's helpful. Well, she doesn't think it's unhelpful. Mm-hmm. He says that he does want her and he thought she believed in him. Um, Becca wants to believe him, but he was hoping tonight would end on a good note so they could see what could happen. Do you see how he, he's gaslighting her? I'm just like, why do we have to see what will happen? Why, why are we not just doing it? The, <laughs> first of all, Who, it, who's the outside? Um, it's magic. You know, who is the outside person or energy that's going to tell us what is going to happen tonight? Mm. Becca's down and you're over here leaving it up to chance. Well, here's the thing. I'm very confused. If we, if we was doing it, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. So this whole thing of Austin over here, he throwing his head back, basically like, hey, is this conversation helpful? And things like that. Like, no, it's not helpful. 
But you know what else is not helpful? A liar. Right. And that's basically what Austin is. And if you don't want to do it, just say that. And that's the problem that I have with him the most. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It gives the illusion as if he's open and honest, but he hasn't been this whole time. Mm-mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, Emily, f- Ugh, I'm so tired of saying this. Emily feels she and Brennan have been brought closer together. Trauma bonding. <laughs> <laughs> Austin and Becca are packing, but they're not really talking. Mm-hmm. Becca, Becca feels disconnected, and she thought that they'd at least try to connect the night before, but mm-hmm. they didn't. Austin asked Becca where she's at mentally, and Becca said, well, you didn't want to snuggle last night, and there's tension this morning, so mm-hmm. it's been kind of difficult. Yep. Austin thinks rehashing things makes it um, hard for him to get to a place of intimacy. Mm-hmm. He feels he's expressing where he's at, and his apology about that Friday where he went to a different room was sincere. Mm-hmm. Then they hug and kiss. Like, I think Austin's upset because she's not believing him, but Austin, uh, please, please get real. Remember, that's Friday. <laughs> I'm just supposed to believe everything you say when you aren't doing the things that you say you want to do. And that I'm Friday, sorry. that Friday was the first night, right? Yeah, when okay. you went into the yeah. other room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Becca and Austin go to a wolf sanctuary because this is Austin's attempt to make up for the couple's retreat. Okay. <laughs> this experience has made Becca realize that she came into this process with the goal of her marriage to work and she is willing to put in the hard work and the effort. Listen here, be careful, Wolf. Austin might kiss you in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen here, I don't know what they're into and things of that nature. I did think it was kind of nasty how Becca let the wolf lick in the mouth, but that's that's a side note. Mm-hmm. Um, Austin, it's like literally she's telling you what can happen to fix all of it, and you're giving her everything but that. Yeah. I feel like it's more effort to find a wolf sanctuary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Than it is. Maybe it's not in Colorado. But I feel like it's more effort to find things than to stay in your house Mm -hmm. than to give your wife what she wanted. Yeah. And now he's gaslighting her. There is another word that um it's like it it means blue balls, but I can't think of the word right now to where he to where it's it's almost it's like a bait and switch. Yeah. It's like he's playing that game with her. Mm -hmm. To where he promises something and then he 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 don't even it's not even an underperformance. I think she would take an underperformance more than a no performance exactly he, he, he's not performing at all like if if there was like a physical issue to where things just aren't progressing and mm-hmm. you can't get there i'm sure she would be more understanding of that than than you just egging her on yeah this whole time i think someone wrote in the comments and i could be wrong hold on is this the last scene that's of it the night? i think somebody wrote in the comments um if i'm not mistaken i think austin has a female roommate mm-hmm. i think he has a female roommate and this process may have made him realize that he's in love with her. And I'm like, let me address that comment for a second. Okay. If that's the case, be a man and be honest. Yeah. That's that's all you have to say. The reason why I don't respect Austin and Austin's the true villain of the show is because at least with Michael, he is being himself but extra, extra, extra. Mm-hmm. Brennan don't care how he look on camera. No. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Orion, he's a weird on himself. He's right there. He's right on Austin's tail for being a villain, Mm -hmm. right? Austin, you are selling yourself as someone who's willing to do the work and to meet Becca where she's at. You won't meet her. And now it's like, you got me defending Becca, and I'm not even a big fan of Becca. You won't meet her anywhere in the religion uh, spectrum. Right. Okay, cool. You told her she's going to hell. All right, cool. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to actual physical intimacy, right, you won't even meet her halfway there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, then what's your job? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 what's your purpose then? Mm-hmm. And and Austin is just irritating. I really, I have never, this season has been so lackluster. I have never looked forward to a reunion as much <laughs> because I need to see what they saw and what they thought in real time. Yeah. I cannot wait for the reunion for this show. Yeah. I want a reunion with the castmates and I want a special reunion with just the uh, experts. And I want them to give Orion um, a 10 minute max um, speaking for the whole reunion. Oh. Because I've heard all of his. You want two nothings. minutes a segment. basically. <laughs> Just not yet. Yeah, I've heard I've heard enough of his sweet nothings, his empty words. Mm-hmm. I'm done. Anything else that that stood out to you on this episode? Buddy? That's all I got. Y'all be good. Make sure y'all thumbs up the episode. I want a hundred likes. I want a hundred likes, and make sure y'all subscribe, share the episode, and we will be back this Saturday. Actually, no, we will be reviewing Ready to Love.
Not ready to love. <laughs> love is blind. Love is blind, right? <laughs> so many love shows, right? Yeah. We will be reviewing Love is Blind. So look forward to that in the next 48 hours. We will have that up and out ready to go. Yep. Anything else, Blair? That's all I got. Y'all be good. Bye.